Hello friends, this is Manoj Vaktani and I welcome you all on behalf of the Edupedia world. Guys, by now we have completed 5 video presentations relating to chapter bond valuation. By now we have covered the topics of bonds, types of bonds, difference between a bond and a debenture, valuation of a debt security, relationship between coupon rate, price of the bond, yield and discount in bond pricing, nominal yield, current yield and yield to maturity, zero coupon bonds, deep discount bonds, perpetuity bond, callable bonds, convertible bonds, reissue of bonds, and that's it. So guys, we have completed like almost one third of the entire chapter by now. And this particular video presentation will help you out with the practical exposure which is relating to bond valuation. I believe that you guys are enjoying your day to day and definitely you guys are having enormous amount of regular and recurring revisions as well. Remember guys you made a promise to me that you will be providing yourself time and again the alarm that you need to revise the topics thoroughly just to get the complete conceptual clarity of the entire SFM. If in case you have any kind of query questions relating to the topics which we have already covered in our last presentations, it would be good to interact with us. You can drop in your queries, questions, any kind of stuff that you want to inquire or talk to us in our comments box. That would really help us in knowing and understanding your needs way better. So guys, we start this video presentation with our first topic of today and that is Bonds listed in the National Stock Exchange. So I just got that list from National Stock Exchange website, NEC. And this particular topic will cover bonds which are being listed on NEC. And this uh, presentation will cover the option which has been like last traded on 23rd September. So presently, the companies which are being traded on NEC's, NEC's series top list are ECL Finance, NSC has provided in a, like they have their analogy um, by which they provide the names to that series that is N1 over here. This ECL Finance company's bonds are being issued at a face value of rupees 1000. And the last price on which it was trading and closed was 1010 rupees. As far as the change from the last day is concerned, you can see it is minus 0 0.47. The open price was 1014.70 rupees. I, the value which went upscale, it was 1014 rupees and 70 pesos. On the lower side, it went below to a range of 1006 rupees and 50 pesos. Apart from this, we have Housing and Urban Development Corporations bonds also listed on National Stock Exchange. There is uh, IFCI also available, India Infoline Finance. So these are the major companies which are having their bonds listed on National Stock Exchange. In order to attain the perfect knowledge about bonds, we need to go through these kind of websites regularly so as to ensure that we keep our interest at a very high level while studying SFM because SFM is indeed a very interesting subject if you will be simultaneously taking theory as well as practical knowledge of the markets as well. So my prerogative while delivering any kind of presentation would be that you guys get the thorough knowledge about the markets as well as the theoretical knowledge which is being required to be presented on CA final examination. So guys, let's move on to another segment of ours which will say non-convertible debentures and this issue has recently closed so i'll make you go through with that as well so there is a company named srei infrastructure finance the rating for this particular non-convertible debentures was issued by bwr and the rating was presented as double a plus so let's talk about bwr first bwr is a credit rating agency just like itra care the sile fitch that's BWR, that is Brickworks, Brickworks Rating. Double A 
plus is the best kind of rating which any kind of credit rating company can provide to a company which is planning to list its non convertible or convertible debentures to the issuers in stock market or bond market you can say that that is the best kind of credit rating which can be available this ensures that the company is into a good credit position and certainly if it is going to present its bond in the bond market definitely the kind of coupon rate and the kind of payment guarantee which is which that company is going to provide us by the time of maturity date that's absolutely fine with that company and that company is going to provide us the better gains all throughout its tenure the issue went open on 7th september 2016 and it went closed on 28th september 2016 the face value for the bonds was rupees 1000 the issue price was exactly same as face value and the minimum application for which a person can invest in these bonds was rupees 10000 so 10 bonds of rupees 1000 in multiples of one bond there so if a person is willing to purchase that bond so he first has to invest rupees 10000 and then he can take up one each unit of bond that is rupees 1000 1000 1000 there are so the issue size which the company was uh, uh, predominantly going for was 1000 crore rupees and the lock in period is not available in that case and the tax benefit is also not available in this case apart from this the company is aiming to raise up 250 crore with green shoe option with uh, with this particular bond and with a green shoe option of rupees 750 crore aggregating to a overall issue size of up to 1000 crores now i can understand that you guys must be pondering about this fact like what does green shoe option means so i don't want you to wait for any more time i'll just brief you as to what green shoe option means i cover this topic separately in my theory content but first of all just to give you some clarity about this topic in the share a green shoe option is a clause which is basically contained in an underwriting agreement of an initial public offer that is ipo which allows the underwriters to buy up to additional 15% of the company share at an offering price the investment banks and brokerage agencies that take part in the green shoe option process have the ability to exercise this option if in case the market public demand for shares exceeds the expectation and stock trades above the offering price this term actually green shoe came into the picture from one of the company that was named green shoe manufacturing company the now present name of this company is right right corporation this was founded in the year 1990 it was the first company to implement this green shoe clause in their underwriting agreement in any kind of company's prospectus the legal term for green shoe is over allotment option because in addition to the shares originally offered the shares are set aside for underwriters as well this type of option is the only means permitted by the securities and exchange commission for the underwriter to legally stabilize the price of an issue after the offering price has been determined the sec introduced this option in order to enhance the efficiency and competitiveness of the fund raising process for the ipos that was the main concern as to why this option came into picture that was way back like almost 1990s kind of thing the green shoe option basically works as a price stabilizing option it works like uh, uh, the underwriter works as a liaison finding the buyers for the shares that their client is offering the price for the share is basically determined by the sellers the company owners or their directors and the buyers are the underwriters or clients when the price is basically determined the shares are ready to publicly trade the underwriter has to ensure that these shares do not trade below the offering price if the underwriter finds that there is a possibility of shares trading below the offering price they can exercise this green shoe option in order to keep the price under control the underwriter oversells or shorts up to 15% of the shares that was initially offered by the company as i discussed with you earlier as well right so guys that was how green shoe option works and that was how why this particular 
clause is being added to nowadays IPO. We'll be discussing this green shoe option topic much more in detail and I'll be covering it in theory content which I'll be later on uh, releasing the video in my forthcoming presentations as well. So guys, let's move on to another topic of today's video presentation and that is Capital Gain Bonds. So guys, Capital Gain Bonds are the instruments which offer tax exemption for transferring gains of long-term capital assets. You see, government is day in day out providing us the schemes with which we can avoid payment of taxation. One such scheme is basically that if we have just sold out any kind of our capital assets after a period of 12 months or 36 months as applicable in uh, different cases. So the government does offer you a chance that you don't need to pay the capital gain excess on that particular asset. Better, you can just fix up those proceeds and invest it into capital gain bonds. Thereby, we will not be charging you for any kind of taxation. So the time period for that particular thing is 6 months from the date of transfer of that capital asset. One has to invest within the next 6 months those proceeds into capital gain bonds. The eligible bonds under section one uh, under section 54EC of Income Tax Act are RECL and NHAI bonds. These are the two op options. So you must be pondering as to what is this RECL and NHAI means. RECL is basically Rural Electrification Corporation Limited and NHAI means National Highway Authority of India Limited. These two sectors are booming for Indian economy and as far as the government is concerned, they are predominantly trying their best. They can actually accumulate enough amount of resources for these two areas. One is national highway, another one is rural electrification because there are many villages in our country that still requires electricity to come out in their zones. And there are many people in villages which are waiting for that thing to happen just to ensure and just to promote that kind of facility for those two areas as well. This capital gain bond and related tax exemption is provided to the people who are or who have just like transferred their capital assets. So the coupon rate or interest rate which the companies these two will be providing is 6% each. The tax status for both the companies that will be taxable. So the Interest rate or coupon rate, whichever you get from these two companies, is basically taxable in the hands of bondholders. Apart from that, you'll be getting a tax benefit, which I have just mentioned in Section 54 EC of the Income Tax Act. The minimum requirement for investment is rupees 10,000, and the maximum it could go up to 50 lakh rupees in both the cases. Apart from that, there is a lock in period of three years. If in case a person willfully tries to exit from this kind of scheme, then he'll have to pay for that tax exemption which is initially provided while transferring the gains of long-term capital assets. In that case, there will be no tax benefit and retrospectively, it is going to hamper that person and subject, subject to those conditions, that gain, initial gain would be taxable in the hands of investor. And the mode of interest would be annual. Annually, that interest is going to be paid coupon or interest rate that is available in 6% per annum. So let's discuss this section 54 EC of the Income Tax Act 1961 NDD. As per the provisions of Income Tax Act 1961, any long-term capital gain that is arising from the transfer of any capital asset would be exempt from tax under section 54 EC of the Act if in case the entire capital gain realized is invested within six months of the date of transfer in eligible bond. And those eligible bonds I have just mentioned to you, RECL and NHKL. Such investment is to be held for a period of three years. That is the lock-in period. To avail of the capital gain exemption, the bonds so acquired cannot be transferred or converted into money or any loan or advance can be taken on security of such bond within the next three years from the date of acquisition or else the benefit would be withdrawn. If the amount invested in bonds is less than the capital gains realized, only proportionate capital gain would be exempt from tax. For example, 
he did got a capital gain of let's suppose 60 lakh rupees and the maximum limit with which you can apply or invest in these bonds is 50 lakh rather than 60 so you will be getting the proportionate capital gain benefit only up to 50 lakh rupees for the rest 10 lakh you will have to pay the taxation amount as well so guys that was all about capital bonds and section 54 ec of income tax act which is relating to that now let's jump on to another great topic of ours today and that is tax free bonds tax free bonds are the instruments are the instruments where interest earned is not taxed at all however there is no deduction which is available for the principal invested in these bonds guys please don't get misunderstood with the fact only the interest earned on these bonds is exempt that is it is not going to be taxed however if you are investing the principal that in any case you will have to do that principal amount will not be available for deduction any kind tax free bonds are listed on bombay stock exchange and national stock exchange thereby giving investors an option to sell before the full term of bond that's a good part tax free bonds are a good option a very good option only for very risk aversive investors with a lot of cash in their hand risk aversive is a person who is not willing to take any kind of risk in his life so for them tax free bonds are the best instruments in which they can invest their amount so there is some bad news for all those risk aversive investors currently there are no tax free bonds which are open for subscription in bombay stock exchange or national stock exchange so guys you will have to wait in order to invest in these tax free bonds so now let's discuss something about corporate bonds corporate bonds are the debt securities issued by public and private corporations companies issue corporate bonds to raise money for variety of purposes such as building a new plant purchasing any kind of big instrument or growing their regular business companies pay a stated rate of interest that is generally semi annually along with a promise to pay the principal on the specified maturity date so guys that was all for this wonderful presentation i hope you liked it in any case i would like you all to interact with me day in day out and regularly revise your topics so that would really help us to understand your needs and your capabilities way better i'll be concluding this video with a dose of motivation and that it and that is life begins at the end of your comfort zone many people want to accomplish very big 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 things in their life but somehow they don't want to compromise anything on their comfort zone they just want that all the rats from riches can be taken care of from for them themselves as an and they don't want to work any in for that so guys one thing you must need to understand in order to crack either a ca final or you need to accomplish any of a life goal sooner or later you have to understand that life actually begins at the end of your comfort zone once you get out of your comfort zone will be able to accomplish all the desires and all the goals on time within the deadline dream is a goal with a deadline you will have to take care of that that is going to ensure your success whether it's in ca final or in life with this i would like to conclude my video thank you on behalf of the edupedia world have a nice day take care guys bye